I watched Freakazoid. Believe it or not, I do remember when this show was on, but for whatever reason, I never watched it. It didn't grab me. I really don't know why, but I don't think I would have appreciated it even if I did watch. I think it's because it was the dialogue was so fast paced it went over my head. That might have been it. But I appreciate it a lot more now as an adult because of how brilliant the creative team is. <laughs> and now that I know a lot more about nerd culture, I've been to a few cons and I've known the kind of people who the, uh, who make this kind of show. <laughs> so I didn't watch the first episode like I've been doing. I watched a random episode. I picked, <laughs> this one was the fourth episode and Fanboy is his name, <laughs> which that kind of person is very much still around. I think the kind of person they're making fun of, I think has gotten angry and more dangerous, at least how we perceive that kind of a person. Because it's always been around and only this person, instead of harassing artists, other fans, this person's harassing their celebrities, but in a very funny way. It's a predecessor to say a syndrome from Incredibles. There's a very similar dynamic going on, but this takes full advantage of the, the comedic timing, how nerd culture is, because it's... There's a bunch of different sequences, but the main one is that <laughs> fanboy is lonely and determined to make friends, and he scares off everyone he tries to make friends with because he's so intense, and... Oh, there was a special, an especially great joke where he's like, oh, I totally respect boundaries, and he's hugging at the... He's hugging George Takei, who has gotten more relevant now. All the celebrities they've gotten in here, I swear, have gotten way more relevant now. I think that's why Freakazoid is such a huge cult following. Because it is really good. I, I, there's a lot of the same team behind Animaniacs, which is another one. Interestingly enough, I watched Animaniacs as a kid, too. Found it extremely annoying as a kid. I did not like the Warners, but I liked the other characters. It's another one I appreciate a lot more now, but... Still don't really care for the Warners that much. I just find them so annoying. I feel like the few episodes I did, the episodes for whatever reason of it, that feature the Warner siblings, I always happen to feel feel bad for whoever they're harassing because the episodes I've seen are the ones where their target doesn't deserve it. Even though I know there's plenty of times where their target does deserve it, kind of like a Bugs Bunny, Elmer Fudd type of deal. You know, if I feel the same way about Tom and Jerry sometimes, I feel like I feel so bad for Tom. Just wanting, he's just trying to do his job. I'll sidetrack. Anyway, Freakazoid. Interesting. There were quite a few celebrities in this episode. There was, they had Mark Hamill who was himself. They had George Takei, which if you did this now, you could probably <laughs> talk about George Takei's social media popularity. Then there was. I think there were more, but they crammed them all in one episode. Oh, it was written by Paul Dini, who is a very famous writer in the nerd community. Oh, they also had a really good... Oh, they had a really funny joke when Freakazoid's trying to escape fanboy at Comic-Con. He's trying to bribe him off with all of these wonderful treasures. <laughs> the first one is, oh, how about a signed copy of Batman 4? <laughs> Which I think became Batman and Robin. Yeah, that's... Batman, Batman, uh, and they're the two, the first two Tim Burton ones, then Batman Forever, and Batman Robin. So yeah, that'd be Batman Four. It's like, oh, <laughs> that's actually funnier now. And then he tries to bribe him up with an autographed picture of Stanley, who I believe charges at least fifty bucks for his autograph at Comic Con. So that it's worth at least fifty bucks. Oh god. There's so much, there is so much, there is, joke a minute, I like this style, I like that zinger, joke a minute style, energized, fast paced, bright and vibrant, and this is very much that, it's a, another show that I think does that kind of style, is Panty and Stocking, which is incredible, I love that show, looking at Freakazoid's animation, you know, this this review is all over the place because Freakazoid's all over the place, so hey, it's in character. Now, switching back to Freakazoid, I like... Oh crap, I lost my train of thought. <laughs> Fitting. Well, 
figuring out something else. They had a bunch of different seg different segments. There was a segment called Frenching with Freakazoid, which, heh, <laughs> Frenching. So you learn a, a qui a coupé le fromage, which is essentially who cut the cheese. <laughs> Someone who does speak French. That, I could tell that one right away. That was very funny. <laughs> that and I read it on TV Tropes a few hours ago. Oh, and there uh, you had a small sketch about gnomes, which is very funny. You got this lore, they're stealing Vikings' pants, and then they, they're cursed by the Vikings' brother who's a wizard. That was a, That's a great funny idea. Actually, I wonder, I wonder if Freakazoid's going to be coming back at all. Because this is a very talented team. Oh, yeah, I know what I wanted to say earlier. Looking at the animation, I really like this style, this very... Beautiful, high, high contrast Warner Brothers animation. I think nowadays with Photoshop, you could make it look a little more vibrant. I do notice that Photoshop's technology allows for more vibrant colors, but this style with the way it's shaded and this, the way it's designed, I like this, that particular style because it's so beautiful. It's, I like high quality Warner Brothers animation a lot. It's like similar to Scooby-Doo Zombie Island, that style I think is so pretty. So it's very, it's really nice to see that here, but it does go very cartoony as well. <laughs> oh yeah, I'm skipping through it. He has an extra long spit take. Catchy theme song too. Oh, <laughs> I got a screenshot of him burping fanboy away. It makes much more sense in context, I swear. Oh, Freakazoid. Yeah, I think this is when I'd probably start watching more. I'm... It's a shame that it didn't last as long, but now there are there is plenty to watch. Especially if you're new going into it, but the problem is that there's fewer segments to watch, so it's like, oh, if you want more. I hear Animaniacs is coming back, so maybe they'll bring Freakazoid back, because I'm sure this team is still around. I'm sure they'd be willing to come back. And there's definitely a fan base of animation fans who'd be very, very into it, especially with the fan base that the show has. And I know, given the nature of people like Fanboy, especially with the people harassing artists, that's seriously not cool. I'm really glad that that's being taken more seriously. Though you can still play it for comedy. But yeah. Curious to see what they do with that, because especially with what the internet became, I wonder if the internet already had this screwy side to it, or if the internet was directly inspired from this. Because <laughs> I know the kinds of people who make stuff like this. Anyways. Glad I checked it out. I'm probably going to be watching a lot more of this in the future. Thank you, internet. I much appreciate it.